What's going on, baseball fans? How are we doing? So in my last video, I put together a list of my top 10 teams in the second half during the wild card era. But according to some people in the comments, I left off some teams. So I decided to do a part two. Let's go talk about it. Starting off my list, I have the 2014 Pittsburgh Pirates. If we go take a look at the numbers, let's look at the first half. They were 49 and 46 at the end of the first half. And in the second half, they were 39 and 28, a 582 win percentage down the stretch. If we go to fan graphs here, Pittsburgh down the stretch actually had the number one offense led by Andrew McCutcheon. He finished third in MVP voting that year. He had a phenomenal season, a 7.4 wins above replacement. He also had Russell Martin that year, Josh Harrison, Starling Marte, Neil Walker. I mean, they had a lot of solid guys on that team. Pitching wise, they were okay. Starting pitching, they had Francisco Liriano, a young Garrett Cole, Vance Worley, Edison Volquez, Charlie Morton. So it was a pretty decent starting pitching staff for the Pittsburgh Pirates that year and for relief pitching, Mark Melanson leading the way. A very good season overall for Melanson that year. But in the end, the Pittsburgh Pirates lost out to the eventual World Series champion San Francisco Giants in the wild card game. But the 2014 Pittsburgh Pirates, a very fun team in the second half that year. Coming in at number nine, I have the 2003 Chicago Cubs. Listen, we're always going to remember the Cubs in 2003 for the whole Steve Bartman thing. But one thing that gets forgotten about with this Cubs team is that they were really good in the second half. If we take a look here, 47 and 47 at the end of the first half, but then going 41 and 27 down the stretch, a 603 win percentage. This Cubs team had a lot of talent. And you know, what? I'm still surprised to this day that they weren't able to get to the World Series that year. If we take a look real quick before I go to the players at the standings at the time, they were third in the division, three back. Uh, behind the Astros and the Cardinals. But by the end of the season, they finished in first place, 88 and 74 to win that division. The Cubs that year, you know, this was a year where they had Sammy Sosa. He wasn't really hitting for a very high average or on base, but the guy was still hitting home runs all over the place, had 40 home runs that year, had 22 homers down the stretch, 52 RBIs, a 529 slugging. And they also had Kenny Lofton that year, Moises Alou, Marcus Gruzelanic, uh, or Mark Gruzelanic, sorry, Aramis Ramirez. You know, a lot of good players in that offense for the Cubs, but where they really excelled was the starting pitching. Mark Pryor, Carlos Zambrano, Kerry Wood, Matt Clement. I mean, what a really solid four guys they had that year. And then if we take a look at the bullpen, you know, it wasn't an amazing bullpen by any means, but had some solid guys. Joe Borowski, Mike Remlinger, Kyle Farnsworth, Antonio Alfonseca had a lower FIP than that ERA. You know, a pretty decent Cubs bullpen there. Overall, a pretty solid Cubs team. You know, so close to the World Series that year, just couldn't quite get it done. Hey, Steve Bartman will live in infamy in Chicago Cubs history, but in the second half that year, they were really decent. Coming in at number eight, we have the 1995 New York Yankees. Got to go back in time a little bit here, but this 95 Yankees team was really good. If we go take a look at how they did in the first half, 30 and 36, six games under 500. But in the second half, they came roaring back 49 and 29 down the stretch, a 628 win percentage. At the time, at the end of the first half, they were in fourth place, eight games back in the division. But by the end, they finished in second and won the wild card. This was thanks in large part to both the offense and the pitching. Just an overall pretty good team. Bernie Williams, Wade Boggs, you had Randy Velarde, Mike Stanley, Paul O'Neill, even guys like Daryl Strawberry were on that team. Uh, if we take a look at the pitching, Jack McDowell, a young Andy Pettit on that team, Sterling Hitchcock, David Cohn was really good for the Yankees in 90, 1995. Overall, this Yankees team, they did lose in the end to the 95 Mariners in five games in the first round. But the New York Yankees, with that incredible month of September, 21 and 6, 778 win percentage. That has to be one of the best Septembers of all time. This Yankees team, they weren't quite those that dynasty yet but they were pretty close to it and they did win the world series the very next season but the 95 yankees a very good second half team up next we have the 2013 la dodgers at the end of the first half only 47 and 47 a 500 team but second half they were incredible 45 and 23 down the stretch a 662 win percentage i thought this team had enough to make it to the world series that year unfortunately losing to the cardinals in six games in the championship series that year who 
ended up losing to my Red Sox that year, might I add. But the Dodgers definitely had a very talented team that year. If we take a look at the Dodgers that year, both offensively and the pitching, they were just very good. Hanley Ramirez, Juan Uribe, Andre Ethier, Yasiel Puig that year were very good down the stretch. They even had guys like Carl Crawford and Adrian Gonzalez come over to them from the Red Sox in that big trade the year prior uh, for the Dodgers on the pitching. Kershaw, Granke, Ryu, Ricky Nolasco, remember that name? They were very good with starting pitching down the stretch. If we take a look at the relief pitching, the bullpen also stepped up for, stepped up for them that year. I mean, can we just, I mean, Kenley Jansen, he has been with the Dodgers for so long now. You had Brian Wilson on that Dodgers team that year. He was incredible down the stretch through 18 games, a 0.66 ERA. This Dodgers team... I definitely thought they had more than enough that year to get it done. Uh, unfortunately, again, like I said, losing to the Cardinals in six games in the championship series that year. Uh, but this Dodgers team, incredible in the second half. We're real quick before I move on to the next team. At the end of the first half, they were in second place, two and a half games behind. And in the end, ended up winning that division very, very easily, winning it by 11 games that year. So unfortunately for the Dodgers, couldn't get it done, but an incredible second half team. At number six, we have the 2007 New York Yankees. This team was stacked that year and they got off to a terrible start in the first half, 40 and 43 at the end of the first half, but they got it together. 51 and 25 down the stretch, a 671 win percentage, incredible. 19 and nine in July, 18 and 11 in August, 19 and eight in September, incredible. At the end of the first half in 2007, again, only 43 and 43, second in the division behind the Red Sox, who did win the World Series that year, might I add? I digress, but they were nine and a half back in the division at the time. I mean, they were behind teams like you know, Oakland, Minnesota, Seattle, Cleveland, LA, Detroit. So they had a ways to go to make up in the standings. But at, by the end of the season, 94 and 68, second in the division, only two behind the Red Sox that year, and the fourth best record in the American League. This Yankees team, like I said, was stacked. They had the MVP that year, Alex Rodriguez. He was incredible down the stretch, a 312 average down the stretch, 4, uh, 434 on base, 24 homers, 70 RBIs. He had 15 stolen bases down the stretch as well. But look at these other guys, Robinson Cano, Jorge Posada, Bobby Abreu, Hideki Matsui, Johnny Damon, Derek Jeter. The list goes on. What a lineup for the Yankees that year. And for the pitching, Andy Pettit, Shin Ming Wong, Mike Mussina. Who remembers Roger Clemens coming back and pitching for the Yankees that year? And you had some young guys in there as well. Phil Hughes, Ian Kennedy. Yes, Ian Kennedy was a starter for the Yankees at one point. But going to the bullpen, Mariano Rivera. Jabba Chamberlain was insane that year for the Yankees. Who remembers the infamous bug game against the Indians in the division round that year? That was the team they eventually did lose to in the playoffs. But this Yankees team, incredible down the stretch. What a second half that they had in 2007. At number five, we're going to go back to 1995 and talk about the Seattle Mariners. In the first half, 34-35, and 35, one game under 500. But in the second half, they roared back, 45-31 and 31 down the stretch, a 592 win percentage. This Mariners team had some fun players. Let's go take a look at some of these players. I mean, you had Ken Griffey Jr., but you also had Edgar Martinez, Tino Martinez. I mean, this was a fun team. And for the Mariners on the pitching side, you had Randy Johnson leading the rotation that year. You had Chris Bozio, Tim Belcher, Andy Beans, but Randy Johnson, I mean, he was the guy that year. 18-2, and two, a 2.48 ERA, a 2.08 FIP, over 12 strikeouts per nine. Randy Johnson was insane in 1995. If we take a look at the Mariners at the end of the first half, they... Uh, in the AL West, where is that West division? They were in last place in the AL West at the time, five games back. But by the end, they came roaring back, tying with the Angels for the division, eventually beating them in a one-game playoff to win the division. Unfortunately for the Mariners, they, we talked about the Yankees that year earlier. They did 
beat the Yankees with that infamous Ken Griffey Jr. slide at home plate, one of the uh, more memorable moments in baseball history. But they eventually fell to the Indians in six games. But this Mariners team, very good down the stretch, ended up winning that first round against the Yankees. So the 95 Mariners come in at number five on my list. Up next, we have the 2004 Houston Astros. What a weird season for the Astros that year. You got to think, they made it all the way to game seven of the NLCS against the St. Louis Cardinals. But along the way, they just had some bumpy times. They were 44 and 44 at the end of the first half. They ended up firing Jimmy Williams, their manager, and they replaced him with Phil Gardner at the All-Star break. They also made a big trade for Carlos Beltran, who was huge for them down the stretch. But let's take a look at this real quick. Like I said, 44 and 44 at the end of the first half. In the second half, though, 48 and 26. Both of those moves really paid off. Don't forget, this is a team that had Roger Clemens in the pitching staff as well. Let's take a look at some of these guys. Roger Clemens, Roy Oswald, Andy Pettit. What a big three for the Astros that year. On the offensive side, like I said, Carlos Beltran, he was huge down the stretch. He also had an incredible postseason that year. You had Lance Berkman, Jeff Kent, Jeff Bagwell, Adam Everett, Mike Lamb, Morgan Ensberg, Jason Lane. I mean, come on. I mean, this, this Astros team was rather decent. Ended up making it to the World Series in 2005, losing to the Chicago White Sox. But for the Astros, uh, a very good team in the second half. At the end of the first half, in that, and remember, the Astros were in the National League at one point. Remember that. They were 10 and a half back in the NL Central at the end of the first half. But if we take a look at the end of the uh, second half, they were second, 90 and 70. They still were 14 behind that St. Louis Cardinals team. That was a really good Cardinals team, and they pushed them all the way to game seven of the NLCS th that year, like I said. They ended up winning the wild card. But this Astros team, thanks to a couple of really good moves, a new manager and a Carlos Beltran, who ended up going to the New York Mets the next year. But hey, uh, those moves really paid off for them. An incredible second half team. At number three, I have the 2015 Toronto Blue Jays. What a team in the second half for the Blue Jays that year. In the first half, 45 and 46, one game under 500. If we take a look at the standings at the time, a very weak American League East that year. Toronto, fourth place at the time, four and a half back in the division. But by the end of the season, finishing in first place, six games ahead of the Yankees, thanks in large part to the second half that they had, 48 and 23, 676 win percentage, incredible. I mean, look at what they did. I mean, July, they actually, June, they were very good. July, they struggled. August, they turned on the Jets. September, they finished strong. But the Blue Jays, what a second half for them overall. This team, the lineup was really good. Josh Donaldson, Edwin Encarnacion, Jose Batista. What a year for him. I mean, what an, what an eventful playoffs that he had. In the first round against the Rangers, he had the brawl with Odor, and he had one of the most memorable bat flips of all time. You had also uh, Kevin Pillar, Russell Martin on that team. Troy Tulowitzki was on that team. Remember that? Uh, on the pitching side of things, remember they brought in David Price. You had R.A. Dickey. Remember you had Estrada and Mark Burley and a younger Marcus Stroman on the team. In the bullpen, you had guys like Brett Cecile. Remember, Liam Hendricks was on the Blue Jays. He wasn't even the closer for them uh, like he is today with the White Sox. But uh, this Blue Jays team, uh, what a great team in the second half. Eventually, uh, again, they did win a memorable series against the Rangers, but they fell short to the Kansas City Royals in the championship series, who did go on to win the World Series that year. The Blue Jays, so close to a World Series, but... Uh, we will always remember how good they were down the stretch in 2015. At number two, let's stay in 2015 and let's talk about the New York Mets. The New York Mets ended up making it to the World Series that year, losing in five games to the Kansas City Royals. I have them ahead of the Blue Jays on this list because, well, hey, they did make it further in the playoffs than the Blue Jays did. The, the New York Mets were, you know, not terrible at the end of the first half, 47 and 42, but in the second half, they did play better, mainly thanks thanks in large part to the addition of a Yoenis Cespedes. He really helped out that offense down the stretch. If we take a look at that offense, I mean, you had guys like Curtis Granderson, again, Yoenis Cespedes, uh, Travis Darno, Michael Conforto. Remember Lucas Duda was on the team, Daniel Murphy. Remember they had David Wright. And then uh, on the pitching side of things, remember Matt Harvey was just so good in 2015. Jacob deGrom, a younger Jacob deGrom, Noah Syndergaard. Remember they had Bartolo Colon, uh, younger Steven Matz as well. In the bullpen, uh, Jarese Familia was the closer at the time you know guys like Addison Reed Gil Martin were pretty good that year 
uh, down the stretch for them. But for the Mets, by the end of the first half, they were 47 and 42, two games back of the Nationals. But by the end of the season, if we take a look at the standings, winning the division by seven games. So Yuena Cespedes really helped out that offense down the stretch, brought in a different kind of an energy for the Mets that year. They really woke up down the stretch. Again, did fall to the Royals in five games in that World Series. But hey, the New York Mets, very solid down the stretch. for the, And hell, hey, hey, got them to a World Series. And coming in at number one on my list, I have the 2019 Washington Nationals. The 2019 Washington Nationals had an incredible turnaround. At the lowest point of their season, they were 19-31, and 31, 10 games back in the division in fourth place. But by the end of the first half, they were able to kind of get it turned around at that point. 47-42 and 42 to end the first half. If we take a look at where they were in the standings at that time, they had already moved all the way up to second place six games behind the Braves in the division at the time. But in the second half, like I said, they turned it around a little earlier, but in the second half, they stayed very strong. A 630 win percentage down the stretch, 46 and 27 to end the season, which eventually they were still in second place, but they were only four games back at that point, made it to the wild card game against the Brewers, an epic wild card game that year. And for the Nationals, the reason they come in at number one on my list, they made it all the way to the World Series and beat the Houston Astros in the World Series in seven games that year. This Nationals team was really good yeah they were 19 and 31 at one point but that talent really did what it was supposed to do there was a lot of talent on this team Anthony Rendon Juan Soto the year the Soto shuffle really uh just came alive that year Trey Turner Howie Kendrick was huge in the playoffs for them Victor Robles Adam Eaton as Drupal Cabrera was big on that team Jan Gomes Kurt Suzuki were big too but uh, the strength of this team was the, was the starting pitching. Max Scherzer, Strasburg, Corbin, Anibal Sanchez. I mean, good grief. Joe Rost and Voth were really good down the stretch for them that year. I mean, the Washington Nationals, even though the bullpen was weak, they stepped up for them in the playoffs. Uh, in my opinion, I think the 2019 Nationals won easily one of the greatest second half teams of all time. So let me know what you think down below in the comments. Did I leave any teams out on this list? Let me know. But that's all I have for right now. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next time.